all right guys what is going on welcome to another video and today we just have we have a lot to discuss we have a lot of un to unpackage and uh yeah let's just get right into it so the breaking news is that bielsa is going to be the new manager of the uruguay national team and as y'all know i'm a big uruguay fan um and after the world cup i was kind of disappointed because I really thought we had the team uh, that, you know, we could maybe make it to the quarterfinals, maybe pass the quarterfinals um, after the 2018 World Cup, you know, beating Portugal. And I think it was the quarterfinals. We made it to the semifinals, lost to France. And um, I just expected a better, better result uh, on this 2022 World Cup. But after the disappointment, um, Diego Alonso was apparently fired on February 28th. Uh, this is honestly the first time I'm hearing of it. Today's what April seventh, and he was fired on February twentieth. So, a little over a month and a half uh after the World Cup ended. So, I don't know. Um, if y'all don't know who Marcelo Bielsa uh Bielsa is, um, he was a former Leeds manager. Um, he did. Uh, in my opinion, a great job with Leeds. Um, he also managed uh, the Argentina national team, Chile national team, um, I think America uh, on the Mexican league, and uh, Atletico Bilbao, and you know some other teams in France, uh, Lille, Marseille, uh, and I think Lazio in the Italian league. So, a couple. A whole bunch of uh, teams he's actually managed. Um, and some of these stints, he obviously didn't last that long. But he's known for... He's a pretty well-known manager. Uh, he's known for his weird tactics. And honestly, I'm kind of... Uh, I'm kind of... Curious about what he's going to do with the Uruguay national team. Um, because... If we look back at the history of the Uruguay national team... Um, Argentinian coaches haven't had the best sort of track record with the Uruguay national team, um, or at least leading them. So, uh, one of the other factors is, you know, Bielsa's weird tactics, as I've mentioned before. And when I talk about weird tactics, I'm not talking about, um, you know, running a you know, four strikers or four forwards up top. No, I'm talking about weird things such as, okay, he did this back then, but he used to sabotage the pitch before uh before the game. Like, uh, he'll, you know how before the game they'll, like, wet the field? He used to, you know, wet certain parts of the field more. So I think it was, like, when they played Barca or something, they wouldn't be able to do their... um their tiki taka so effectively um but at the end of the day he does you know he employs a sort of when he plays three in the back or four in the back he'll have either two or three uh center backs right so most of the time depending on how many attackers the other team has he'll decide how many center backs to play with and um Although he's a tactical genius, right? He'll have, for example, um, also, you know, looking, you know, back then when uh, he played Barca, he had one center back or one player just stuck on Messi the entire game. So he was sort of as his uh, spare man or something like that. So in the back, he um, instead of man marking everyone, he would have one in the back who would come off as the sweeper or or something to clear the lines, but regardless, I think Uruguay has um the players to fit Bielsa system. Honestly, um you know they got in the back they got Cuates, uh Jose Jimenez and um and Araujo, but um what i don't like about bielsa is he's one of those coaches that you know as i've mentioned before he doesn't change his tactics so you know uruguay has players like valverde um up top we got Nun uh, nunez 
They got uh, Pelestri. You know, we got, you know, the midfield is good. It's just an overall complete team. And those players that uh, he'll expect these players to sort of play into his system. And instead of, you know, let's say one player gets injured or, you know, um, he'll expect a player that plays, you know, the same position or whatever to have the same sort of effect on his system, although he's never played that system before. Honestly, though, I like seeing, you know, those type of coaches that are, like, locked in in the sense of they're, like, tactical geniuses. They're, they have a, they have this sort of... Th- those old-school type of coaches, those sort of players like, you know, uh, Mourinho, those sort of uh, coaches who... Uh, I don't know how to explain, but those coaches who are pretty much prepared for every possible outcome, you know, um, so Uruguay has a young national team, um, a lot of up-and-coming players, and, you know, I'm curious to see what happens. Honestly, I'm just really curious about how all of this is going to play out. Um, As y'all know, you know, I really hope, you know, he does something good with the Uruguay national team. Like I said, I was disappointed after uh, the last World Cup. Didn't really, you know, amount to much. But we have, what, three years before the next one? What is it, 2026? Yeah, so 2026 is going to be here in the U.S. I need Uruguay to make it. Um, Hopefully, like I said, Bielsa is the man for the job. Um, if you guys have any ideas on like, or any predictions on what you guys think is going to be the lineup or who he's going to play or any opinions on Bielsa, uh, please let me know down below in the comments. And, uh, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to the Uruguay games, uh, to the Uruguay games and see how, uh, his tactics align with the players that Uruguay has because I don't know, man, um, I was on the phone the other day with my dad, and we had a whole discussion about uh, Bielsa. It, this was, you know, before it was kind of confirmed. Um, and he, I didn't think that Uruguay was going to be able to afford him, you know, contract-wise. And they're just trying to do whatever possible, I guess, uh, to hire him. So, like I said, we'll see We'll see how it plays out. Um, yeah, so... Um, hopefully we're able to qualify. Hopefully, uh, something great happens in the Copa America and, uh, yes, uh, that's about it guys. Peace.